The next day, Henry woke up with a start to his driver's voice. Wake up, Henry, he said. You have to take your first train of the day. Who? Henry retorted. It's too early. I don't want to leave my nice warm shed, he said sulkily. Sorry, but to Topham Hatt's orders. Ugh, said Henry. Fine, he said after letting off steam rudely. I'll go. Just stop nagging me and wait for me to wake up. With a very ugly yawn, Henry puffed wearily out of the sheds. Why me? Why me? He grumbled as he left the nice warm shed. He didn't notice the three troublesome trails smirking at him. Meanwhile, Gordon the Big Engine was waiting at the station to pull the express as Henry backed down onto his coaches. Henry glanced over and saw Gordon. He tried to be casual and blew his whistle as a hello. He was shocked when Gordon actually whistled back. He's not mad at me. That thinks he actually does believe me, Henry said. But it turned out Gordon was only whistling to let the guard know he was ready to leave. He didn't even acknowledge Henry was there. And with a loud whistle, a pompous look, and a lot of express coaches, Gordon stormed out of the station. Without even looking in Henry's direction, Henry sadly watched the express depart. He felt helpless, but all he did was just blow his whistle and sadly depart with his train. he was going with the express while Edward was holding on to his sanity for dear life when Henry came along. Hello, Edward, said Henry in his normal cheerful voice. How are you? I'm fine, said Edward uncomfortably. He was very aware of the feud between Henry and Gordon. Henry looked over cheerfully at Gordon. Hello, Gordon, he said. How are you doing this fine day? Gordon ignored Henry and looked over at Edward, looking uncomfortable. Um, I'll talk to you later, he said. Um, of course, said Edward. Gordon then laughed. Henry felt depressed. Are you okay, Henry? asked Edward. No, Edward, said Henry sadly. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Since 98462 and 87546 told those lies about me, things have been different between me and Gordon. He doesn't trust me. He hates me. He doesn't hate you, said Edward. Really, Edward, said Henry, are you that old and blind? Are you that old that you're blind already? Can't you see that he clearly hates me? Sorry, said Henry. Ah, listen, Henry, you should give Gordon some time to think. Give him some time for him to realize that what those spiteful legends say about you isn't the full truth. Please, just give him some space for him to breathe a little. If he's a true friend, he'll come around. 
his very hardest to be Gordon's friend and to try to tell him that what the spiteful engine said wasn't the full truth. So whenever Gordon was resting on a siding or was in an area alone, Henry was sure to show up and try to start a conversation with him. Much to Gordon's dismay, he would frequently try to run away from Henry. Hoping that soon the big engine would realize that Gordon just wanted to be alone, aka away from him. Unfortunately, 98462, 87546, and 76624 saw this and came up with a plan to teach Henry a lesson for bothering Gordon. The next morning, a strange man came to Henry. Henry, he said, the fat controller told me to tell you to come through the station because there's a special train he wants you to pull. I haven't been informed of a special train, said Henry. Please just come, said the strange man. All right, don't fuss, I'm coming, grumbled Henry. Henry's driver opened the regulator, and Henry puffed away, starting for the station. Henry raced down the line, suspecting nothing. Gordon was sitting at the Napper station, thinking about what he should do with Henry, when suddenly he heard his whistle and looked over. And he saw a freight train parked on the line that Henry was going. Gordon was frantic. He blasted his whistle loud to try to warn Henry. But Henry was too conceited to notice. Gordon's only whistling at me because I'm such a smart engine. Let me whistle back. Then Henry saw the freight train up ahead. It was on his line. Oh no, Henry said. Stop! Stop, driver! He yelled. His driver slammed on the brakes, but the wet sleep from the rails began to make his wheels slide. He shut his eyes and waited for the crash. jumped out of the brake van before Henry crashed into it. But Henry and the brake van were in horrible condition. The van was in smithereens, but Henry's funnel and front were badly damaged. Henry's buffers were damaged from the crash, but Henry's funnel was damaged by the rocks. Winston was then called to help sort out the mess and take Henry to the works to be repaired. what to think, but he didn't know one thing for sure. He should watch his back and keep his eyes on those spiteful engines before they strike next. 